George Stone plants nearly 600 acres of corn. His modern, well-equipped farm is located in the heart of the corn-growing belt of North America. The hoppers of the planter are filled with hybrid seed corn. This is corn which has been scientifically developed and selected for use as seed. corn planter. Four kernels of seed corn from each of the eight hoppers are planted every three feet along the row. A liquid wheat killer is sprayed on each row. Using the eight row planter, Mr. Stone can plant 150 acres of corn in a day's work. That's almost a quarter of a square mile. This is the Stone farmhouse. Nearby are the feed yards for cattle. The corn Mr. Stone grows stays on his farm, where it is fed to livestock to fatten them for market. For many corn farmers are also stock raisers. These cattle are eating silage, which is corn that has been chopped up, stalks and all. It comes from last year's corn crop. Feeding the cattle is one of Brian Stone's daily chores. This is Ed Stone. He's feeding corn to the pigs. The pigs eat their corn shell, and they eat it from wooden feeders, which protect the corn from the rain. Often the corn farmer can make a far better profit from his crop by feeding it to livestock and selling the corn-fattened beef and pork than he can by selling the corn itself. Mom, is dinner ready? Already. How about some dinner? Yes, it's all ready. Hey, I'm sure getting hungry. Well, it's all ready. Cooler Sunday. Low tonight, mostly in the 50s, with a high Saturday in the 60s. Showers and thunderstorms, warm and humid over most of the state this afternoon, possibly locally... In the days following planting, the sun, the earth, and the rain do their work. And soon the new corn is up. Mr. Stone cultivates around the young plant. The cultivating keeps down the growth of weeds and grass in between the rows. Hi, hi, oh, hi. Several times a year, Mr. Stone sorts his corn fattened hogs for market. Some are chosen to remain on the farm for more fattening or for breeding, while others are sent off to market. They will be shipped to the stockyards, which are currently offering the best price for hogs. Replacements are born on the farm twice a year. The heavy sow is kept from rolling over on her piglet by this wall. Life for a young pig in the farrowing house doesn't seem to be a particularly hard one.
In a few weeks, the pigs have grown enough to run outside. At first, they nibble on spilled kernels of corn around the feeder. But soon, a smart one finds the source of the blood. By August, the corn is thick and tall. This spray kills weeds growing between the rows. The corn is also sprayed with an insecticide to kill insects that attack the stalks and leaves. The spraying machine is built high off the ground so that it can pass over the corn without damaging the stalks. Driving away from their farm, the stones pass between fields of ripening corn, most of the way to town. This town is the county seat. The work of county government is centered in the courthouse. The stores along Main Street indicate that this is the shopping and trading center for the families of the surrounding farm area. All right, line them up. It's time to do your 4 boys. Bring them around, boys. All the way around. Many corn farmers are also in the business of raising superior livestock for market. And interest in prize animals starts young. Each boy has raised the steer he shows at the county 4-H fair. Okay, you're it. You're number one. That's right. That winner is Eric Floor. His final steer is Eric Floor. Eric Floor is the first corn is harvested while it's still green. This machine cuts stalks, cobs, and all, and chops them into fine bits. This chopped up corn is called silage and will be fed to cattle. The silage is stored in silos. is blown up the pipe to the top of the silo. A month later, the corn in the fields has been further dried by the sun. Most of the corn crop is harvested after it has dried, because dried corn can be stored for long periods of time without spoiling. This corn picker takes two rows at a time and strips the ears from the stalk. Then rotating cylinders inside the machine rub the kernels off the cob. The shelled corn is lifted through a pipe and collected in the wagon drawn behind the picker. This machine, operated by one man, can pick and shell 15 acres of corn a day. It would take 20 men working without the machine to do the same job. Because of the new machines, the corn farmer today plants and harvests far more corn than ever before. The shelled corn is also stored in silos. There are five silos on Mr. Stone's farm, yet every kernel of corn stored in them will be used during the next year to fatten his livestock.
Mr. Stone ships a load of his corn-fattened cattle every few weeks during the summer and fall. The truck delivers the cattle to the stockyards, a hundred miles away. Thousands of head of cattle are bought and sold in these yards every day. Often, Mr. Stone goes along to see that he gets the best price possible for his animals and to acquaint himself with the current market conditions. For the corn farmer has to be a businessman as well as a farmer, stock raiser, and mechanic. Mr. Stone keeps detailed records of the buying and selling of his livestock. Late autumn, and still the corn harvest goes on. This machine strips the ears off the stalks and husks them. Most of the ears of corn will be ground up, cob and all, before being fed to livestock. But meanwhile, they are stored whole in buildings called corn cribs. conveyor and an elevator carry the corn away from the wagon and into the corn crib. Altogether, Mr. Stone will store 1,700 tons of corn this year. But even that won't be enough to feed his livestock. He'll have to buy more from corn farmers who raise no livestock of their own. Not long after the corn harvest is finished, the first snows come. These cattle have just arrived from ranches in the west. They will be fattened over the winter on this season's corn crop and sold next summer. When they first arrive, they are herded into the field to clean up any bits of corn left behind by the picking machine. Using modern machinery, the corn farmer today can raise record crops of corn. Some of this corn may be used commercially in industry, and some may be processed for human consumption. But on many corn farms, the entire crop is stored to be fed to livestock to fatten them for market. For often, it is the sale of corn-fattened livestock instead of the direct sale of corn that brings the corn farmer the best return for his labor.